بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. All praises to Allah. We send peace and salutations upon the final messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Welcome back to Dean at Dawn. الحمد لله. All praises to Allah. Cape Town is blessed uh, and South Africa in general is blessed by having uh, international guests coming to our shores, visiting us and uh, and uh, teaching the um of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. And today, uh, or this week, alhamdulillah, we're having a guest who's coming from Al-Quds, who's coming from Palestine, who's going to give us some information about Palestine and about Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And I'm sure uh, his ziyara, which is organized by Ashraf Al-Aid. Ashraf Al-Aid is a humanitarian organization, very famous organization. Uh, they, they are doing wonderful work in the service of the Ummah, nationally and internationally. And I witnessed their work, alhamdulillah, before. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, increase them. Uh, and also uh, this uh, Fadrat al-Sheikh, uh, he is also hosted by other organizations as well, such as Muslim Judicial Council uh, and, uh, and also Al-Quds Foundation, hosting Fadrat al-Sheikh and Dr. Uh, Dr. Azzam Muhammad. Let's welcome him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My respected and dear Sheikh, jazakumullah khayran for this uh, uh, a humble invitation. Um, I am honored to be here with you today this morning and I'd like to also express uh, my appreciation to the households and uh, the beautiful mashallah Muslim families that are welcoming us into their homes uh, this morning. Likes. Barakallah feek. Jazakallah khaira Fadrat al-Sheikh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and make your ziyara inshallah blessed. Allahumma ameen. Allahum Just let me introduce uh, Fadrat al-Sheikh Dr. Azzam Muhammad. Uh, he's a graduate of Al-Azhar University. Uh, he, he got BA in Islamic uh, Science and Arabic Studies, and he's a visiting Imam of the Holy Masjid Al-Aqsa, Al-Aqsa Masjid. But the Sheikh also holds a Master and a PhD in uh, Mechanical Engineering, MashaAllah, uh, he's specializing in, uh, uh, in renewable energy. And uh, Fadilat al-Sheikh also, uh, he is... <coughs> he did so, so many researches in, uh, in, in, in the, about Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, and a member of the Muslim Association of Canada, an instructor of the Islamic Center of, uh, of uh, Oshawa and a, a board member of Al-Azhar Academy of Canada and the list is, is go, goes long and mashallah I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless Fadilat al-Sheikh and to accept from him and to increase him in knowledge and uh, let's get to know Fadilat al-Sheikh more inshallah and about the reason and the purpose of his visit to South Africa. Fadilat al-Sheikh, yani, uh, li Janub Afriqiya uh, is this the first time you're visiting South Africa and what is the purpose of visiting us? MashaAllah, indeed this is uh, my first time and it's been um, very, very heartwarming to uh, interact with MashaAllah members of the South African Muslim uh, community here uh, in Joburg and now in, in, uh, in Cape Town, later in Durban inshaAllah ta'ala. Uh, it's not the first time I have interacted with South Africans mm. because uh, South Africans, alhamdulillah, have been uh, strong supporters of Al-Aqsa yes. and, and committed regularly for, for the past more than two decades True. on an ongoing support, unwavering support physically in Al-Aqsa. So I have I've had the privilege to interact with my South African brothers in the compound of Al-Aqsa. Uh, Inside Al-Aqsa. In Al Al uh, for the past decade. And this is my first time in, in South Africa. Uh, my purpose and the objective uh, of, of visiting uh, my brothers and sisters here in South Africa is to raise awareness about Al-Aqsa, uh, uh, remind ourselves what's going on there, the impacts and the, the, uh, the, the new developments and their uh, detrimental impacts on the Ummah. And inshallah ta'ala, I have one objective, getting the whole Muslim Ummah in South Africa to come visit us in Al-Aqsa. Not once, not twice, not thrice, but making it a family holiday, inshallah ta'ala, of support. Both, there is, there is, there is mashallah, reward, as well as, you know, uh, uh, rest and peace, inshallah, for the family. It's true, for the Sheikh, yani, the, the, the whole Ummah, Al-Aqsa is the, the case of the whole Ummah of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the, the, the Ummah in South Africa specifically, mashallah, very, يعني very attached to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, very connected to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And Fadrat al-Sheikh يعني was, was here at that time whenever there is any incidents happening in, in Palestine in general or in Gaza or in, in uh, Al-Quds, you'll find the, the hearts of the people yearning to go to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and there is protests and there is rallies 
and the whole country becomes like, the colors of the of the Palestinian flag all over. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, the Ummah is alive in South Africa and inshallah all over as well. Dr. Sheikh, yani, tammin ala al-Aqsa. I wish, I know, mashallah, Ashraf al-Aid is doing amazing work and maybe they, uh, by raising this awareness, they're also going to find some, some support or raise some support to Al-Masjid al-Aqsa and I'm sure our audience can support and take part in that through Ashraf al-Aid, inshallah. But Father Sheikh, give us some information about Al-Aqsa, about what's happening there in Al-Aqsa mm -hmm, currently, mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. all the dangers and the challenges facing al maqdisiyin Right. Akhi um, al-Habib, there are some concerning news mm -hmm. and there are some good news. I'll start with the good news. The good news is that the people of Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem, in the Holy Land, throughout Palestine, are courageous and resilient. And, and we're talking about the younger generations that according to the, uh, the schemes that, that have been developing, uh, are supposed to be isolated from this, from this struggle and from their identity. The, 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 the uh, strategies that have been implemented by uh, our opponents uh, were geared to stripping away the Muslim youth in Jerusalem and in Palestine, in this Holy Land, from their attachment mm -hmm. and from their identity to Al-Aqsa. However, all of their plots, وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ All of their plots have gone into vain all of their spendings, all of their budgets have literally gone to vain. So we have a new generation, my brother. A new generation of what we see in the news today. And it's not just the news. These are really, uh, 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 they're, they're symbolic and they are a representation of what truly is the, at the grassroots level. So we have a, a whole new um, layer of generation of, 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 of teens and in, in, their, in their young 20s that are fearless, fearless, each and every one of them, men and women, are, uh, uh, is a story of more than Hollywood, Sheikh. Mm -hmm. more, you think Hollywood is more than Hollywood? Heroes, mashallah. Now, so the good, that's the good news. And that's really the... Uh, the, the safeguard, that's, that's what truly safeguards Al-Aqsa is their sacrifices. And when I say sacrifices, it's uh, what they endure. Uh, the people in the Holy Land remind me of the Arabian horse. They, are, they have the highest endurance. They, they run, yes, hmm. they run that extra mile. <clears throat> the amount of pressure uh, that they endure financially, physically, in terms of physical abuse and violence, emotionally, uh, socially, uh, politically, and so many, uh, so many other domains. If, 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 uh, you know, if we're going to do it, and, and I have an engineering background, and you know, we like mm -hmm. to do things in a systematic way, mm -hmm. so if we put it in a function, and we add, and we put it in, we add all these pressures, in a, in, a, in a lab scenario, it should equal a human being going insane. Insane. Yet, you find these people, mashallah, are uh, living a life that is uh, with qana'ah, with satisfaction, mm. with content, with rida, with complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and complete happiness, no. despite all the, the chaos that is happening uh, around them. And I've come to the conclusion that there is one element missing in this function. Mm -hmm. That is the mercy of Allah. Allah. My dear Shaykh and my respected uh, uh, audience, I have seen the mercy of Allah, Shaykh, and I invite you to come to Al-Aqsa. Sure. One time, at this time, after Fajr, I go, you know, in my routine behind the dome of the rock in my office and I sit there and I look at the dome of the rock facing the qibla and do my dhikr and do my word and one day subhanallah you are so concentrated and you see the rahmat descending down and the barakah mm -hmm. this this divine factor is what gives them resilience 
This is all the good news. Akhi al-Habib, despite all of that, the situation in the Holy Land, we're not talking about two equal forces. We're talking about a tyranny and people who are armless, who have no shield except their Iman. Allah. Nothing. And so, uh, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, I can categorize it as a very endangered species, if you will. I know uh, this term and the, and the challenges about Al-Aqsa have been, have been uh, echoed for more than a decade. However, this year, there were, there were remarkably concerning and um, devastating events and, and escalations that took place towards the Judaizing of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And each year, unfortunately, th- th- that, that progression rate increases exponentially. So, I'll get to the details. Akhil Habib, this year in Al-Aqsa, in the middle of Ramadan, the, uh, and by the way, all the struggle in the Holy Land and the wars against uh, Gaza, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them resilience and patience and watch over them. This, the, the, the cornerstone and the focal point of all of these uh, struggles and escalations and expeditions, by the way, is Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. The Intifada 1, Intifada 2, mm-hmm. all the words of Gaza, the focal point was Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And so, this year, Akhi Al-Habib, uh, and you know, yes, every Ramadan we have these escalations and these tensions uh, of these rates. However, this year, the raids were completed at a very violent rate. Stun grenades, utter disregard to international human law for keeping the safety of the worshippers and the places of worship were just completely disregarded. Violations of, of uh, uh, many international treaties and in The Hague, etc. have been disregarded. Uh, this year, Akhil Habib, they passed new laws. They have legalized the acts of worship in Al-Aqsa. Before that, they were just a bunch of extremists, Mm -hmm. and they are, who happened to storm Al-Aqsa. This year, they added a legal framework Mm -hmm. to it, saying, listen, what we're doing is legal. It's an umbrella. And and this is one of the very dangerous moves. Now you're saying, you're you're basically establishing a new reality. Mm -hmm. The Zionist narrative... Long-term planning. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The the Zionist narrative is that Al-Aqsa isn't the full compound of 144,000 meters squared. It's just Al-Qibli prayer hall. Mm. It's not the whole area. It's like this campus, you know, okay, the masjid is is the masjid. Mm. But what about the school and the... Because Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa has schools, has courtyards, has prayer halls, has trees, has wells has offices, all of that compound is Al-Aqsa. They call it Temple Mount, we call it Al-Aqsa. And so they consider Temple Mount, and that's the narrative they want to portray, like a public park. Mm. A public park for everybody. And Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa for the Muslims. One of the extreme developments, my dear brother, is that uh, we call it at taqsim al-zamani and at taqsim al-makani. I'm sure you've heard of this term before, which is time-based division and you know uh, location-based or space-based division, like what's happened in the Haram al-Ibrahimi. Uh, one of the devastating, cons- most concerning developments is that now there were incidents of guards uh, at al- uh, the, gu- the, the guards at the gates of Al-Aqsa turning people away during duha time, which is Primarily the time when the Zionists storm Al-Aqsa and conduct their raids and their, their acts of worship. And they tell them, come back. it's not your time for prayer, come back for Dhuhr. Can, do you understand mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. magnitude of, of, of risk here? Mm-hmm. That I am not allowed in Al-Aqsa for Dhuha during Isha. This is Al-Aqsa. And they're telling me, oh, when it's time it's for your... It's not your time now. Mm-hmm. Exactly, it's not your time. And so this is 
And the Ummah needs to understand that Al-Aqsa is slipping away as a holy masjid, as a first Qibla, as the third Haram from our authority and our jurisdiction mm -hmm. completely. So, uh, I'll just skip to the two other points inshallah and we can uh, mm -hmm. discuss other aspects. The two other points akhi, that are extremely concerning is again legally encouraging and allowing the entry of what's so called Qurbani. Mm -hmm. Qurbani inside Al-Aqsa for the Zionists. When they, when they, so before, just to give you some perspective, they would storm Al-Aqsa, you know, and they would just quietly do their tawaf and leave. Very concerning, because that's not your place of worship. Now they've escalated, they up it a level, which is, now I bring with me, so now they are expressing the highest, um, the highest forms of worship. They are doing a sujood al-malhami, which is like, uh, you know, the, the highest form of submission or act of worship in their in their aqidah in al-aqsa. That never happened before this year. That never happened before the six months ago. Mm, something new. Something new, and it's legalized. Like they actually, uh, you know, and that's where the, the the flaw is. The legal system in the Israeli authorities is supporting these extreme uh, right wing uh, groups. Mm -hmm. and, and giving him legal cover as if the legal system there and the legality is just or even authentic. Mm -hmm. What you mentioned, Fadl Sheikh, subhanAllah, it just reminds me of what happened to Palestine itself as a, as a, as a whole land, the whole land of Palestine. How did it start with taking one part and then stripping another part and stripping another, until they, they took the whole land? And now they're doing the same thing to Al-Aqsa. Sit food there, and then you start taking another, and then and, until they take the whole, the whole, the whole, the whole area. 100%. Is this correct? A hundred percent. Listen, uh, the, the enemy is very smart. The enemy is very patient. They're not in a rush, mm. and uh, and so they will take baby steps, right? And and we have to be mindful that every step counts, mm. and we need to combat this progression of the of the uh, changing the the current form. Of Al Aqsa. By the way, yani, we're not just saying Al Aqsa is ours and it's just out of mere emotion and, and mere um, uh, faith based uh, um, you know, uh, backing. This is the, le the international law. By international law, when Jerusalem was invaded and occupied in 1967, Al Aqsa compound was segregated and separated from the agreement. And international, under international law and under that international agreement, that Al-Aqsa compound is under the Jordanian jurisdiction. And currently the Awqaf, the Ministry of Awqaf in Jerusalem, still reports and is still funding, funded and it still belongs to the Jordanian government. However, the, 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 um, the violence and the police state in Jerusalem have marginalized completely the role of the Awqaf in managing the affairs of Al-Aqsa and as if uh, it has, not as if, it is currently the one and only that uh, passes decisions and orders and executive orders and manages what Al-Aqsa compound is and what is not. So we as the people need to stand up to this tyranny. We as the Muslim Ummah we need to reclaim what's rightfully ours by visiting Al-Aqsa. Alhamdulillah, I salute all the brothers and sisters who take their time who, uh, and, and support and express their passion for Palestine and Jerusalem in, uh, in, in, in mashallah, various functions like, like uh, protests and other functions and rallies. And I encourage all of them. I personally invite them. I implore you to come with your family and visit Al-Aqsa because that's the current prime challenge in Al-Aqsa is that it, the, the, the Palestinians are severely restricted from entering Al-Aqsa. Mm -hmm. However, Muslims in the West, they can, they, can, they can enter very freely. All what I said in terms of challenges doesn't apply to them. It's a, it's a trip. I have never met one person, mashallah, went to Al-Aqsa except that their life they tell me, uh, 
transformed. They, they can stay there for the Sheikh for, for, for some days or absolutely. Mm. When you when you enter, you get a 90 day visa. Mm. You know, without applying, you just show up and you enter, you have you stay for 90 days. 90 mm. day, three months if you will. Allah. Nobody will talk anything to you. Three months if you wish. Absolutely, Akhi. Um, uh, so the, the, the Muslim world, as you know, is restricted from, from doing ribat in al-Masjid al-Aqsa. Uh, the, the Muslim world? The Muslim world. Okay, but, but you're talking about non, Muslims living in non-Muslim countries. Muslim minorities can. like us mm-hmm. in South Africa, in, in Britain, in Europe, in Canada, in North America. It is now our role. It is now our turn. To protect al-Aqsa. To protect al-Aqsa. Mm-hmm. This is our turn. This is our thagir. We are now at this front. It is ours. Mm. If you choose to stand up to this task and to this responsibility, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will shower you with the barakah of Aqsa. Of and they can make the niyyah of ribat. Absolutely mm. it is ribat. وَلَا يَطَعُونَ مَوْتِ أَنْ يَغِيضُ الْكُفَّارِ إِلَّا كُتِبَ لَهُمْ بِهِ عَمَلٌ صَالِحٌ the, the, the verse basically translates that they don't take a footstep or a place that detest that the opponent detests you, except that that footstep and that place and that residence is rewarded. Allah. The, I I guarantee you. I assure you. The authorities there, the occupation does not like South Africans to be in Jerusalem and mm. to come to pray in Al Aqsa. However, they they legally allow it mm. and they have to because of the international agreements, but they don't like it. So by them not liking it, not only that we are preserving our Al-Aqsa, like you said, it is ribat. It is a form. And ribat yawmin fi sabilillah khayrun min al-dunya ma'alaya. Let's, let's just ponder about this, Sheikh. The concept of ribat, if you don't know, is, is being in that state of steadfast and that state of resilience on that, on that open front. Active front. Al-Aqsa is an active front by all, all means. And if you are in ribat for one day, the Prophet ﷺ says, it is better than the dunya, the whole dunya, and what's in it. So if we take this as the whole dunya, and what's in it. The whole dunya is the whole, not just world, but the heaven, the, the skies, and the universe, and the... And what's in it, Shaykh, are all these, the wealth, mm, mm. All the, the enterprises, yeah. the resources of the world. We're talking about gazillions of wealth that one day in Al-Aqsa is better than the dunya Allah. and what's in it. Allah. And this is only one aspect of protecting Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa how, by, by visiting the, there and, and, and make, staying in ribad there. And I'm sure our South African audience already will take this, will pick up this message from, from Fadl al sheikh the assistant imam or, or the visiting imam of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, Dr. Azzam Muhammad. Uh, don't forget that uh, if you have any questions to, uh, to, to ask to Fadl al sheikh you can just WhatsApp us. Our engineer will put the WhatsApp number, inshallah, so we can uh, straight ask your questions to uh, Fadl al sheikh I, I don't know how much time we have, but maybe Fadl al sheikh this question is for our non-Muslim uh, viewers. Mm-hmm. We have also non-Muslim viewers and uh, many of the South African people they are actually supporting Al-Aqsa, mm-hmm. alhamdulillah. Mm-hmm. And we find lots of support from that. And we remember Nelson Mandela himself. Yes. Uh, he was saying that we won't be feeling our freedom here in South Africa unless the, the Palestinians get their freedom as well. So alhamdulillah, we got uh, support. The, the, the South African people, really, they have, the, they have understanding about the, the Palestinian case. But I want, I want, to, I want from, you, from yourself uh, a response to this Zionist, uh, to this intensive Zionist propaganda where people say, okay, they're just restoring their uh, original uh, temple or uh, that, uh, that land of Al-Quds belongs to them historically. Or uh, how do you respond to this intensive propaganda? Very easy response. Mm. Very easy response. But let me actually first salute and extend my and our deepest gratitude to the people of South Africa and the government of South Africa for their unwavering support for the Palestinians and the Palestinian cause. Just a few days ago at Ashraf al Aid Gala, I was with Minister Pandor, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And she had assured me, and, 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 and when she shared her sentiments about the Palestinian cause, it was very, very warming to our hearts and mind to see someone who um, is just another fellow human being. Mm-hmm. So 
we we ought to we ought to for the for the welfare of our children and our progenies and the le- and the world that we leave behind we ought to wake up the humane value system in our in ourselves uh, in our in our inner selves our conscious and so uh, th- this idea of selfishness you know i am here i am safe i don't care about any anybody else this is the root cause of corruption root cause of um d- disruption in the, in the world order and system no we are one world we are one ummah we ought to live together we ought to establish that harmony not 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 for the sake of ourselves for the sake of our children and so to answer your question my brother brother we have a fundamental principle the fundamental principle is that religious sites and the authority over religious sites is not obtained by historic or political interchanges i say again these religious sites like al aqsa for example is not attained by political or historic interchanges oh who stayed longer who was this who uh, rules now who rules later etc these religious sites and the authority over them are only attained by divine directive divine directive and so the divine directive is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala miraculous trip of al isra and miraj the journey at night for prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from mecca to jerusalem al masjid al aqsa and the ascension to the heavens this trip and the directive that was given there when all the prophets were assembled in that uh, night and they put forward prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam indicating that him and his ummah now are the caretakers and the carriers of this baton for this place and the universality of this message mm-hmm. so this divine directive is really what gives um, originality authenticity and an authority over al aqsa and not you know uh, and and you know if even if we dwell down into the history this is temple this is not etc uh because of time it, we don't have time mm-hmm. but even that historically uh, mm-hmm. until now so jerusalem has been occupied since 1967 until now not a single not a single uh, archaeological evidence was found that dates back to their heritage mm-hmm. and they are working so sheikh day and night to find the, anything mm-hmm. they under al aqsa is all this Tunnels. it's a whole city under al aqsa mm-hmm. not a single evidence you understand mm-hmm. but so but 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 we're not going to say oh you don't have evidence therefore no we 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 don't think like that we have a different paradigm our paradigm is you you can only have authority over this holy site if you have a divine directive mm-hmm. we have a divine directive Mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, Father Sheikh, for explaining it beautifully. And just the lastly, Father Sheikh, in bullet points, uh, tell, tell uh, the, the, the people of South Africa how they can support the Palestinian case and Al Aqsa case in bullet points. In short. Mashallah. Bullet points, uh, my, my dear fellow South Africans, we ought to help and serve. in whichever fields we're in and i sat mashallah with many um people in, in south africa who were passionate to help the first way to help is visit al aqsa go personally and see what see it for yourself see it for yourself even if you are not muslim welcome to al aqsa welcome to jerusalem we are uh, we are thirsty to see you When you go there you'll see the people really warm welcome very warm masha allah very generous you know they they alhamdulillah they they can sustain themselves you know uh, you will see uh, you will experience a, a, a memorable experience far different 
and more marvelous than Mecca and Medina or even other destination you've been to. Number one, visit Al-Aqsa. Number two, each person in their capacity and in their profession need to give zakat and need to purify their talent and purify uh, their, their, their skill which they, which they were entrusted with and give back in that domain. So if you're in IT, give back in IT, find an IT uh, solution. Contact us inshallah, Sheikh. We're more than happy, by the way, uh, to facilitate uh, your, your visit. We're more than happy so that we have a hospitable welcome inshallah and a meaningful journey. And number two, uh, there, are, there are many needs, not just financial. Financial, my primary, and alhamdulillah, Ashraful Aid, as well as other organizations, have been doing tremendous work, not just across the world, but specifically for the Palestinian cause. Alhamdulillah. We, have, we need to increase that. We need to increase that financially and, else, and otherwise. Mm -hmm. MashaAllah, I was, I was uh, talking to, uh, for example, Dr. Ismail Mita, and he was telling me about the, the work that they're doing as an example, not just financially, uh, uh, coupling uh, the education systems in South Africa with, the, with Palestine. So Al-Quds University with the universities in, 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 uh, uh, in, in South Africa. So, so that is another form of, of coupling that's extremely important in education, in, in healthcare, in uh, economy, in energy, in, all sec in IT, right? in all sectors. We all have to s just take that initiative we have to have that drive and that passion. Whatever I have, I want to give back in that capacity, inshallah ta'ala. And number three, after you know, visiting Al-Aqsa and having a meaningful journey after giving back and having that passion, number three, uh, always, always being reminded at home and with our families, raising awareness. So at home, here, you know, uh, not just staying within our bubble, but increasing going out. Because this is... This is the cause for Palestine is a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Is a no-brainer uh, win for the Palestinians because it, there's uh, war crimes happening. The whole world sees it. So we just got to work hard to articulate that effectively to the people, to the media, to the um, to all sectors of South Africa, not just the Muslims, mm -hmm. not just the Muslims. Uh, and with that, inshallah, Taala, yani we we hope that inshallah all of that would be in your in your. Uh, uh, in your scale of deeds and in your scale of and that's the legacy you leave behind Indeed. as South Africans you know that, that we did not let our brethren down mm -hmm. and we have that fraternity inshallah inshallah, inshallah I'm sure all our audience are inspired now highly inspired they're always inspired but now they're more inspired mashallah to support Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and to, uh, to, to support the struggle of the Palestinian people may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our deeds Allahumma ameen Jazakallah khairan Fadrati Shaykh for joining us today and, and speaking to us and speaking to the Ummah of Rasulullah Jazakallah khairan Allah accept from you Ya Rabbi thank you Allah bless you ameen. Allah bless this, uh, this country and, and make it safe and sound and make the people here grow from strength to strength insha'Allah I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our hearts and guide our spirits to Al-Aqsa and to the love of Al-Aqsa Ameen Ya Rabbi Ameen Ya Rabbi Ameen Alright with that we came to the end of this uh, interview with the Fadl al-Sheikh Dr. Azzam Muhammad don't forget you can catch Fadl al-Sheikh today insha'Allah uh, after Maghrib at the Ottery Islamic Society so uh, uh, Al-Ashraf Al-Aid together with Al-Quds Foundation and the MGC are hosting Fadl al-Sheikh today at the Ottery Islamic Society after Maghrib insha'Allah you can be listening to Fadl al-Sheikh there and meet him insha'Allah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your steps and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our deeds Allah Amin, ya mm -hmm. Rabbil Alamin. Mm -hmm. We're going to be taking a short break. We'll come back after this short break. Stay with us.